Jay Jay Nyaga, let's start with the no card mantra. Om Namo Arihantanam, Om Namo Siddhanam, Om Namo Ayadiyanam, Om Namo Ujjayanam, Namo Dvesan Samunam, Eso Panchanam Ukkaro, Sabha Pava Panasanu, Mangalancha Sarvesi, Paramam Have Mangalam, Paramam Have Mangalam. So last year, I had an epiphany, and it happened while I was wrapping gifts. Now, wrapping gifts is a tedious task, and nobody wants to do it. But there's no way I'm paying somebody five to ten dollars per box to wrap a gift, so I got to do it myself. It's just one of those things you have to do, like take out the trash or wash the dishes. So I'm sitting there wrapping gifts and just making myself miserable because I'm thinking about how tedious it was. Uh, has anyone heard this phrase? When it's time to wash the dishes, wash the dishes. Has anybody heard that phrase? It means when it's time to do the chores, get into the chores. Uh, if you get into it, you can make it fun. Uh, you can want to, you want to do a good job. You think of it like a craft. Um, and the time will pass really easy. Hey, come on in. Hello. So I'm talking about an epiphany I had last year about wrapping gifts. And I was not getting into it. Uh, so I have that in mind. And then I'm trying to make it interesting to wrap these gifts. Uh, but it's just not happening. Then I start thinking about the person I'm wrapping the gifts for. I start thinking about how I love that person and I start imagining their reactions when they open the gift. And that works. Uh, it makes this tedious chore that I had a lot better. And that's when I had the epiphany. That is, what should I be thinking about? That's a question that we all must answer to lead an examined life. What should I be thinking about? I know I'm not supposed to be thinking about the past because I can't change the past. But that doesn't tell me what I should be thinking about, only what I should not be thinking about. So the key topic I'd like to explore today is that what should be, we be thinking about during the different tasks we have during the day? What should, be, what should we be thinking about when we take out the trash? What should we be thinking about when we make our kids lunches every day? Does anybody have an idea? The end goal? Like when you pack the different, my kid can eat and then focus on studies. I mean, what right. the end goal? Just like I did with the gift wrapping, right? Oh, I'm doing something great for my family. I should be doing this. This is what I should be doing. I should be joyful doing it. Anybody have any different circumstances that come up during the day? Well, one thing I... I have experienced, especially the one, the, the one, the food part at mm -hmm. the end. So you know, there is a special day uh, called Nivedh. They they cook something with the. It's a one day in a year or something like that, depending upon your rituals. And uh, that day, you know, the women who cooks have to take shower, wear jewelry, and then cook the food. There is one particular shot that I don't like ever. On that day, I love that shot. <laughs> The, the, the thought process is what I've been explained all the time is their thinking is uh, their spirit is very positive in cooking and your spirit consuming as well so thinking part just to point out the that the to me the thought or the thinking during that uh, <coughs> cooking is so pure that the food become pious mm. and I, I mean now I believe in that science is that you know a person who is cooking the thought of that person is ingrained in the food and doing so many things like you know if you think positive while boxing that gift box i think that person will be overjoyed compared to you know just doing it with normal or compared to doing with hatred i think the the um the thoughts in the the energy that you throw into packing the box will show into the person and, and you know sometimes you Let's say the person is sad when they receive the gifts, but still it'd be better than it would have been uh, otherwise, is my belief. 
Thanks for coming today. We're talking about Lesha. Anybody else have any kind of scenario? <laughs> Thanks for coming today. We're talking about what should we be thinking about as we go through our day. A lot of times we know what not to think about. We shouldn't think about the past because we can't change the past. We shouldn't think too often about the future because if, then we're getting ourselves out of the present moment. But that doesn't tell us what we should be thinking about as we go through our day. Anybody have any other examples through their life, in their life? Okay, so the book talks about lesha, that is mindset. And mindset is very important with regards to band. We all remember that band is how karma binds to your soul. And your mindset makes the binding stronger or less strong uh, while you're doing the action that... So this is in the chapter on band in the book. And we have six leshas and they're associated with colors. Those colors are from worst to best, black, blue, gray, yellow, lotus, and white. Uh, sometimes the lotus might be red, I'm not sure. In some, in some instances, it's called red. Uh, the other names are Krishna, Neil, Kapot, Tejo, Padma, and Shukla. That's again from worst to best. Okay, and um, so the book, does anybody know the stories about the friends and the mangoes? So once upon a time, there were six friends and they were hungry and thirsty because they had walk been walking through the forest for days. And they see a mango tree. And the first man said, let's cut down the tree and eat the mangoes. And the second woman said, let's not cut down the tree. Let's cut down one of these large branches and eat the mangoes. And the first man says, I didn't think about that. And the third man says, let's not cut down a large branch. Let's cut down a small branch and eat the mangoes. And the second woman says, I didn't think about that. And the fourth man says, let's not cut down a small branch, let's cut down a twig. And on and on, until we get to the sixth woman. And she says, why are you guys doing that? Let's pick these mangoes off the ground. Okay, and these six people correspond to the six different leshes. And the idea of precluded thoughts, which is very important. It certainly <coughs> did not occur to people's one through five that they could pick the mangoes off the ground. That was simply a thought that did not happen to them because of their lesha. Okay? And it's an important idea to understand. Um, and I think we need a better example. Because it's not, this example is not really uh, relatable because they would presumably have seen the mangoes on the ground. So can anybody update our example for us? At first I thought it could be like a person is drowning and the first person says, let's call 911. And the second person, you know, kind of jumps in the water. And the third person throws a, throws a lifesaver or something like that. But those are all different, right? They're not about the violence that's being caused. Because the first person causes a tremendous amount of violence by chopping down the tree. And the last person causes a very, almost no violence by picking up the mangoes from the ground. So it has to kind of be a continuous thing. So anyway, so think about that for a little while. Tell me if you have a, a better updated example. I have a question. Yeah. So what do you mean, what is the literal translation of Lesha? In English, how would we describe it? Mindset. Mindset. Hi, come on in. I recruited a couple. Hey, great. Hey, come on in, guys. Hi. Today we're talking about Lesha or your mindset. So we, we just talked about uh, precluded thoughts and how some thoughts have never occurred to people. Has that ever, ever happened to anybody? Has, have you been thinking about the problem and someone else looks at the issue and comes up with something completely out of left field that you didn't even think about? 
You're shaking your head, yes? I'm shaking my head because I think like, you know, when we have these things at work that are like called brainstorming sessions, this is exactly what that's about, right? Because we're stuck in our methodology that we've been using for so long or a process. And so we just stick to that process and then someone comes up with some other idea or mindset, you know, that allows us to think about that as being a better option uh, than this. And have you ever been that person? Have you ever, has someone ever said, hey, come look at this? And you're like, why didn't you do this? And they said, oh, I didn't think about it. And how could you not think about something so simple? Have you ever been that person? My uh, kids do that to me all the time. <laughs> Why don't you think of this, Dad? <laughs> I was no. going to say my wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's kind of like in this mango example. The person who says, well, let's cut off a small branch has, has never even thought about picking the mangoes off the ground. It just didn't occur to that person. And so he couldn't make the correct decision. And how can, you, how can we possibly make correct decisions in our lives when those thoughts don't occur to us? It's because of Lesha, okay? Because remember, thoughts are fed to your conscious brain by your subconscious. And your subconscious is influenced by your soul. And this Lesha is about the color of your soul. That is the color of your mindset. Uh, if, if you just came in, we talked about there are six types of Leshas or mindset. Uh, the colors are yes, black, blue, gray, yellow, lotus, and white. What color is a lotus? Does anybody know? It's like pinkish. <laughs> it's like off white. Um, so as you as you progress along the spiritual path, your lesha becomes a different color, and those thoughts suddenly start occurring to you. Better thoughts for you to make better decisions. So as you get rid of the karma from your soul, it become, it feeds different thoughts, to, it affects your subconscious, which feeds better thoughts to your conscious brain. Okay, so that's how we avail ourselves of Lesha. That's how we use Lesha. So let's talk a little bit more about it. Oh, so questions about that. What do the colors have to do with Yeah, I was thinking the same. I was thinking the same thing. Uh, I, I don't think it has anything to do with it. I think you could number them six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, sorry. No problem. I didn't know if that had something to do with like the the gra or like you know like you could some, say that because, right, because those are the same Indian colors, names right? what you saw from Krishna all the way to Shukla. Mm -hmm. right? So there are even the moon positions are in those two Shukla Paksh or so it has some relevance. Right. <clears throat> gotcha. In terms of example, I can think of the one that comes to my mind is insect. You know, your, your mindset, when you see an insect, depending upon what, what nature you have, you could have the, the thought of, you know, anywhere from uh, like cutting the, the tree, like, you know, killing the insect all the way to uh, doing the taking it to the right place ah, where it belongs. Right, that's a great example. That's more relatable than being hungry and coming up on a mango tree. So let's say there's an insect in your house, right? What do you do about it? The first man kills it, right? Just steps on it, right? The second man uh, shoes it away. Uh, the third woman uh, picks it up and puts it outside and in the process injures it, right? And the fourth woman takes like a piece of paper and a cup. That's my method, right? You put the piece of paper down and you put the cup over it and then you take it outside, right? <laughs> and so that's great, I like that. That's a much better example and it uh, incorporates the violence aspect into it. Um, thank you for that. So uh, yesterday I was watching one of the documentary which says that livestock farming causes like 10 times more carbon dioxide and uh, generation of methane gas. But so, so but I was watching with my kids and you know, I always told them like, oh, you're killing animals and this and that. And that's the reason not to eat meat. But I also then they saw and they said that not only because of that, but also because of this, because it's harming uh, the, uh, the 
uh, environment change and climate more than actually the cars and all so which which they don't think it and again in that also the different level of people are involved people who knows it and they really don't want to talk about it people who knows it that okay they don't see how the life livestock farming happens but they directly get the ready made food in the hodl so they don't even care about it mm-hmm. but that is where it comes that some people see it some people say oh that's this is all made up thing some people would see you know some people would say no we should do it so they say go for the plant based all this problem should be resolved so it is again based on person's thinking they make a decision on that's great that's a great another great updated example is what you eat how is what you eat determined by your relation that's great and that so the first man would just eat whatever kind of meat is in front of him because it doesn't occur to him to think how it got there and the second woman would say uh well where did this come from is this a free range in right and the third man would say no i don't want to harm these animals and by creating this demand i indirectly harm these animals that's great i like that that's a very good updated example too about how lesha can influence our life so let's talk about these six okay so there's three and three uh the book divides them into three groups the first three are bad the second three are not as bad um the first one is black that's the lowest one a person in this state of mind shows no compassion or mercy people are afraid of them as these kinds of people are often violent they also carry jealousy and animosity within themselves we all know people like this this is probably not any one of us Here's what the Uttarayadhyana Sutra says about black lesha. A man who acts on the impulse of the five sins does not possess the three guptis, has not ceased to injure the six kinds of living beings, commits cruel acts, is wicked and violent, is afraid of no consequences, is mischievous, and does not subdue his senses. These are the type of person that have a black lesha. So probably none of us. Let's talk about blue. Black was Krishna. Blue is meal. People that have blue lesha are proud, haughty, and lazy. They are unreliable, and other people avoid their company. They are cheaters, cowards, and hypocrites. These people also avoid all things religious. So you all are do not have blue lesha because you are here today. Here's what the sutra says about this blue lesha. A person of the following qualities: envy, anger, lack of self-control, ignorance, deceit, lack of modesty, greed, hatred, wickedness, carelessness, love of enjoyment, a man who pursues pleasures, does not abstain from sinful undertakings, who is wicked and violent. All these habits make up a blue lesha. Let's talk about gray or kapot lesha. This person is sad and gloomy. They find fault in others and are vindictive. They boast about themselves. They become excited over small matters and lack mental balance. So the sutra says a man who has gray lesha is dishonest in words and act, is base, not upright, a dissembler and a deceiver. A heretic, a vile man, a talker of hurtful and sinful things, a thief and full of jealousy. These are the types of habits of somebody with gray lesha. So questions about that or anything we talked about that might have occurred to you before we move on to the next three. Are we is a person according to the book is it does a person have a particular color or lesha uh for all the time or it keeps on changing? it can change but it's not like it changes every moment your it can change as you progress along the spiritual path and as you regress along the spiritual path it changes so uh add to the add to that actually let's say if someone is angry or you know mad that time they may think differently than usually when they are cool. like you know they may not even hate someone but they are angry or something went wrong that's when they start thinking wrong ways so that's that like, changes like no it's a little bit more permanent than that um so a person can certainly get angry and have um for example uh 
black lesha, but they will respond differently from a person who got angry and has gray lesha. So it's not about different emotional states. It's about the precluded thoughts. It's about what occurs to you when you're in those states. Any other questions? So to uh, labeling characteristics of a person like this, uh, does the book say, does it help you put yourself in perspective or condemn, you know, it, it, these are very strong words, very strong. I mean, how is it helpful to label anybody in, in any category? So we should understand what category we're in and attempt to get to the next higher category. <clears throat> so the point is not to put someone else into that category, but for us to learn in which category we are and we should improve ourselves. That's what it is. Absolutely. And remember, the point is, what should we think? be thinking about as we go through our day. That is, and how does Lesha affect that, right? And as we get better and better Lesha, we think differently. And that causes us to rise up out of delusion, okay? Because it causes a positive feedback loop. Okay, let's go to red or Tejo Lesha. People that are red are very careful about their actions and can discriminate between good and evil. They know the difference between right and wrong. They are kind, benevolent, religious, and lead a harmonious life. The Sutra says, A red person is a man who is humble, steadfast, free from deceit and inquisitiveness, well-disciplined, restrained, attentive to his study and duties, who loves the law and keeps it, who is afraid of forbidden things and strives after the highest good. The next one, the second highest, is yellow, or Padma Lesha. A person having yellow lesha is kind and benevolent, forgives everyone, even their enemies. Okay, so this is a key distinction. Uh, I think maybe a number of us would not forgive our enemies, so we might not, might not be at yellow. They observe uh, austerities and are vigilant in keeping their vows. They remain unaffected by joys and sorrows. So certainly not all of us are at yellow, so perhaps some of us are between red and yellow. The Sutra says, a person having yellow lesha is a man who has little, but little anger, pride, deceit, and greed. Uh, remember, those are our four enemies, anger, ego, deceit, and greed, so we have very little of them. Their mind is at ease. They control themselves, they're attentive to their studies, they speak little, they're calm, and they subdue their senses. The last one, shukla lesha or white lesha. There's two different kinds of white lesha. They strictly observe the principles of Jainism, which is the truth. They are trustworthy. They treat every soul as if it were their own. Okay, so do we do that? If we don't do that, we're not at white. They do not have any ill feelings, even for their enemies. They remain calm, even if someone abuses them. Their state of mind allows them to be reborn as a human being or an angel. People of, who have perfected this state will become pure and will have escaped the cycle of life and death once they have died. The Sutra says a person that has white lesha abstains from constant thinking about his misery and sinful deeds, but engages in meditation on the law and truth only. Their mind is at ease, they control themselves, they practice the samitis and guptis, which are the, the, uh, the way we are careful in our actions. They're free from passion, they're calm, and they subdue their senses. So again, very powerful language, this time in the positive direction. So not only does the powerful language allow us to decide where we are, it also is a roadmap of what we should aspire to. That is, if we can be calm, if we can forgive our enemies, then we will be a step closer on the Lesha ladder, which brings us to that positive feedback loop. So questions? You had you you seem uh, you had a question on your face. No, you're okay. Any questions or comments? So uh, what you mentioned right now that uh, you know, like 
somebody abuse someone and that person stays calm so he's like you know comes in that category and all i mean does it really uh, make sense to like live like that or like you know i mean to accept like that way you know i mean if someone says and it's not it certainly and, does make sense because if you react negatively to someone who's being negative to you which is very hard and you're very brave for doing so you will attract less karma to your soul and you will be better and and that can only increase the quality of your life and you also mentioned the lack of passion so does that mean like as far as i live a normal life I'm, i should be fine and i should not have any uh, kind of passion about like innovations and all those things so like, when you say lack of passion what is that Lack of passion means lack of anger, lack of ego, lack of deceit, and lack of greed. These are the four passions that are our enemies. Of course, Jane means victor, and who are we the victors over? Our passions or our enemies, and those are our four enemies. not be in one particular lesha always depending on the situation sometimes would you be in a different lesha than what you typically would be or is it like one person is usually in a certain lesha and then you try to move on it's the second i don't think it changes throughout the day you're not black at in the morning and then blue in the afternoon depending on what has been happening it changes as you progress down the spiritual path so it might be a matter of months or years before you change and remember you can also go back right if you regress on the spiritual path you'll go back i do not think it's a matter of changing during the day and so um okay so i hit the ball long enough right The question is what should we think of during the day as we go through our day as we wash the dishes as we take out the trash as we wrap gifts that is what should we be thinking and I'll tell you the answer and the answer is it depends on where you are along the spiritual path so this is a tricky thing that we've come to learn in this class that is two things seemingly opposite can be true at the same time because a different person asked the question. For example, if one of my daughters says, "Dad, what should I do when I go to college?" I'll say, "You should study hard, make sure that you sleep, you know, don't don't party a lot, you know. Make sure that you open the book once in a while uh, and do that." And if my second daughter says, "Dad, what should I do when I go to college?" I'll be like, "You should try to put the book down. You should try to get out and make some friends. You know, you should try to these are two different answers right two opposite answers but they're both true because the person asking them is different so what i'm going to tell you the answer to what you should be thinking about changes depending on where you are on your spiritual path if you're not far along the path if you're just starting your journey what you should be thinking about during the day is stop thinking about that person you hate stop creating fake arguments in your head and winning them stop worrying about the past if you're a little further along the path the answer is think about the people you love and how what you're doing during the day fits into that picture and how you're working for your family and you're creating opportunities for your children if you're a little further along the path the answer is to live in the present moment okay sense everything you're doing very clearly Don't worry about the past and don't worry about the future because the present moment is all you have. If you're even further along the path, the answer as to what you should be thinking about during the day is how to minimize ashra, which is the influx of karma, and band, which is the bondage of karma to your soul.
and how to maximize samvara, which is the blockage of karma, and nirdra, which is the burning of karma from your soul. You can understand that unless you know all these things, let's say you look back to the sixth, to the first man that I tell, stop hating people. A person who is just starting their journey and needs the advice of stop hating people doesn't know anything about Ashra or Ban or Nirdra or Samvar. You have to have some type of education. You have to get out of your delusion. You have to get rid of your Monia karma, which is delusion inducing karma, to even learn and understand and believe in Ashra and Nirdra and Samvar and Ban, right? So this, so this advice is opposite to that person. That I would tell the fifth woman. Uh, if you are even further along the path, the answer is only think about Jeev, which is souls. Do not think about Ajeev, which is non-living men. And if you're furthest along the path, the answer is to only think about truth. It sounds easy, but it's not. Because in order to only think about truth, you have to rid yourself of delusion and understand that what is in the book is the truth, which most of us don't. The reason I know that most of us don't understand that is because nobody opens the book during the week, right? Uh, as I mentioned before, once you understand that the book contains truth, you will tear through it in a couple of days, okay? Uh, once you get that first hit of the bliss that your soul is capable of, uh, everything that brought you pleasure will feel dull and lifeless. lifeless. Okay, that first hit of the drug you will continue to chase forever and ever. Um, everything else pales in comparison. Books, movies, Forget about it, you know? They seem like children's cartoons that you're no longer interested in. Food, forget about it, because it's not true. It's a delusion, okay? Uh, it, once you start along that path, uh, you won't stop. Uh, you can still wrap presents and think about the truth. And what is the truth? The truth is Jainism. The truth is Ashraf, Nirjara, Sambar, and Bhakti and how those are affecting you as you go through your day. You can still wrap presents and think about the truth. You can still take out the trash and think about the truth. You can still wash the dishes and think about the truth. Notice your actions haven't changed during the day, but your whole life has changed once you realize that the things in the book are true. And as you start to think more and more about the truth, as you start to go about your day, finally your actions will start to change, okay? Finally, you will change your life to accommodate reality. And then the closer you are to that, the closer you are to taking diction. So questions or comments about that? Thank you. I had a question in my mind, but you answered it towards the end, I think. To me, the white, the one, the, the, the topmost is Tirthankara. The yellow is uh, the, but, I mean, Marat Sahib. Uh, and then, that's just my thought, and then all of us are anywhere above it. Uh, and yes, I mean, you know, I will be taking out trash if I'm in yellow or white. Because now I realize that there's a part involved in that too. So uh, when I achieve Diksha, then, then only I can go to yellow or white. Whatever. You know, I think you just explained to me why it is that some people have this idea that when they recite the no karma mantra, they should think about these colors. Because these people, the bunch for Mesti, that we recite the no karma mantra, probably are at different levels of these colors. So I think that's why they're associated with that. But the problem is there's six leshas and only bunch for Mesti, five for Mesti, so maybe it's a little bit uh, uneven. But I think that's very right. Uh, um, what you just said seems to be in contradiction to one of the things that I've taken from you a long time ago, which is you're not your thoughts. Mm -hmm. So how do you reconcile the two? Right. 
So that was our very first recorded class, is You Are Not Your Thoughts. You are actually a prisoner of your thoughts. And for anybody that doesn't remember, three, four years ago, that class, uh, the subconscious feeds you thoughts and your brain has no choice to think but to think about them. But you, we, you, when I say you, you are your soul, you can pay attention to which thoughts, you can decide to pay attention to certain thoughts and let other thoughts go. And it's true you're not your thoughts, but you can only decide to take actions based on the thoughts that are delivered from your subconscious to your conscious mind. And as we progress along the spiritual path, we'll pay less attention to thoughts that would uh, give us karma and more attention to thoughts that would allow us to have some or a near -term. Right, and so that's how that's how we square this seeming contradiction, is that this idea of lesha allows us helps us in determining which thoughts to pay attention to. That doesn't mean you're your thoughts. Uh, it's you still are not your thoughts because your soul, the color of your soul, and it's not the actual color, right? This is just a shortcut I'm using to talk about lesha. Uh, the color of your soul determines the quality of their thoughts that the, your subconscious delivers to your conscious and that those are the only ones you can pay attention to just like the sixth man who didn't even think about an idea that wasn't cutting down the whole tree okay as we improve our lesha we'll decide the thoughts that we pay attention to become better and better So we have some new faces, so I'd like to go over, so I'd like for all of us to introduce ourselves, and then um, that way everybody can know us. Um, so I'm Demir Cheta. I'm an attorney at Selman Munson & Lerner. Uh, I'm not the teacher of dad's class, I'm just the discussion leader. This is a discussion, this is not a lecture. This is not a um, kind of, uh, I'm ju I just write things down and we discuss them. Um, and so the number one rule in dad's class is we always want to take Jainism out of the classroom and we always want to apply it to our lives to make our lives better. And if it doesn't do that, then I'm not interested in discussing it. Um, thank you very much for the very nice comments. And thank you for letting us know what you did at work. This is not just a spiritual thing. We help each other with work. We help each other with um, kids and parent parenting and everything like that we help each other throughout our lives that's why the whatsapp group is called dad's class and networking because i wanted to make sure that it's it's uh we help each other in, in every kind of respect um so that's very important um uh for the two new people i know you don't have books yet i talked about the book i can email you the book and we have physical copies as well i can get those for you um as the as the weeks go on can you write your name a number and email address there and then I'll be sure to add you to the whatsapp group and uh, I can email you a soft copy of the book too as well maybe share the J uh, which book J for sorry. yeah the book is I actually don't even have it today the book is JES 402 and it's uh, the Jane education series it looks like that the four uh, it's actually you know probably there but you have to have a key huh? to get in that yeah okay they all look the same. Yeah, they all look the same. They all the same. This number is the numbers change. Oh, yeah. So yeah, like if you have your kids, it looks almost the same. But yeah, it's like the number. Like, yeah. When we were in Barcelona, like right. six and Right. So we have the podcast too, like you have heard a little bit. So if you want to go back and listen to any of those lectures, uh, any of the discussions, absolutely. <laughs> right. Um, we're recording this. I put those online. You can find it at jainismforeveryone.com. And so if I reference something that you might not understand, you can go back and listen to them. I, I started it at, at the behest of this group, um, but I listen, I need always need things to listen to in the car uh, because of the commute, I got an hour each way, right? So um, I wanted to listen to it in the car. And uh, so that's why, that's a big reason that we put it online. Um, and so uh, any comments or questions? about anything we talked about today, this class about Lesha, about how Lesha can apply to your life. Um, any comments or any, anything at all? Sorry, Tamir, just more of a logistical question. Yeah. Are you gonna continue the um, hybrid kind of model going forward? 
Or yes. Because I, you know, my reliability in person is not there. You, you guys know this. So um, I may have to join from the hospital or whatever. So um, you guys will continue online as well? Yes, we will. If uh, they, if the Batala stops paying for online, then I'll re, re, uh, re up my subscription to Zoom and we'll be back on Zoom or anything like that. But I think enough people are getting benefit out of it that uh, it's gonna be like this going forward. They tried to move us to the trailer, but I said, there's no signal in there, we can't do it in there. Yeah. And they said, what do you need signal for? We're not, we're not doing online anymore. I said, I'm gonna do online <laughs> from now on. Uh, so we, we, we're still here. So uh, I, so I have a Zoom subscription if you want to use it. Oh, okay. Thank you. I have a team. <laughs> we need a signal. We need to I got a hotspot too. <laughs> the we need to yeah, yeah, I might have to spring for that yeah, too. Okay. So. Well, I, I, I have one. So if you need it, I'll just grab it. I'll just grab it. Okay. Great. Um, well, one thing I would like to tell is the, the benefits. The, the One of the reasons, like for example, all summer I struggled. My daughter likes to listen to a story every night. And for example, this Lacia is going to be my topic for next few days until I can come up with something else so it goes for me it has uh, and thanks to Timur and uh, for for giving and preparing all this information but it goes beyond the class and that's why I I think I've, I've enjoyed the class and I have planned to continue because you prepare it and we all benefit so thank thank you very much for that and I, I can't thank enough like Neil and others said that it's uh, it's a lot of work you put in and it's it has definitely helped me in my journey uh, towards uh, the, the color I, I should be getting there. Not there by any means, but should be getting there. So, once again, no, this is good that. knowledge. I mean, once you gain some knowledge, then you understand and then you try to apply. So, this is actually a uh, good knowledge, at least to know. Because, like you said, that a person who doesn't have any knowledge, uh, they will not think about something doing better or something even accepting something new. Yeah. So, right. This is really good knowledge. Right. Other comments or questions on anything we talked about today? This class can be taken by any of us. Uh, if you have a topic that you want to explore, you know, feel free to let him know and we can coordinate those things. Yeah, so it's always, if you are knowledgeable about something and would like to share that knowledge, then definitely uh, be the discussion leader that week. Or if you are not knowledgeable, but you want to be knowledgeable about the topic, reserve the discussion and you'll start to research it and then you'll tell us what you research. And so that's still open to anybody. I'd like for everybody to take at lead at least one class this semester. So uh, regarding, uh, I mean, uh, about this class right now, what you took today, like what if we want to go in detail, right? Right now you just give us the idea that, okay, these are the, you know, things we should do and this is a category and all. But how, if someone wants to get into how, how we can do that, I mean, Great. Say, if if you say, hey, I want to do Lesha two weeks from now, but we're going to go real, real deep into the details, great. Perfect. Yeah, I yeah. would love that. This is just kind of an overview right now, what we got. But definitely, if we have uh, a method which we can follow, I mean, you know, and, and alone doing it, it's kind of a, always difficult, but when you have a group, that it's a different energy and it makes efforts also easy. You hit on the exact purpose that we have this group yes. is because alone we are going to stop because life gets in the way, distraction get, gets in the way and they consume us. But if we come here every week, we remember. It's like we get a little shot in the arm that we're supposed to be thinking about the big picture. We're supposed to be thinking about our soul. And it helps to know that other people are working alongside us. Yeah, and I think we are here uh, because we, I think, like this topic and we like discussion. I think that's the reason we are here. Other than that, I think we are the reason being here. But, yeah, so, I mean, this is really nice, I mean, to improve also. Other questions or comments? Well, thank you much, so much for your time this week. I really appreciate it. It's not something that I take for granted. And I hope that we have a good semester. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.